Well, I told you a couple of weeks ago, I had, uh, I had uh, lunch, Betsy and I had lunch with a couple who's been visiting church, and I'd had lunch with him before, and uh, I said, well, b- well, when you come to lunch, bring a list of questions about what you want to know about our church, whether that's doctrine, finances, history, you know, whatever it might be, uh, ministries we do, and uh, instead, when we got to lunch, he said, you tell me why I should come to your church. And so Betsy and I spent some time doing that. And then that evening, we had a deacon's meeting, and I asked those guys, and they gave their answers. And so that kind of prompted the idea, rather than me, I was planning to do several messages on what makes us unique, and I still may do a few of those after, the, after we do this. But I thought it would be better to hear from our people who are here and for them to tell you what they think is great about our church. So last week, we used most of the staff, not all of them. You'll hear from some of them next week. And then uh, this, this morning, we're going to hear from our deacons. And so we have seven deacons. They're going to come up and share with you uh, why they think you ought to join our church. The first is Mike Selvage. Mike, if you'd come up. And guys, if you, you know who, what order you're in. So if your guy gets up here, you come up at least cl- close to the front of the stage. Okay, and when you speak, uh, be sure to... Hold that mic close to your mouth because that's a music mic, not really a speaking mic. This is Mike Selvage. Mike joined our church and I baptized his wife, Christy, in 1990. Mike leads a community group, serves as chairman of our deacons. He's retired from UPS. Christy serves out the front counter, so you probably have met her coming in sometime. Okay, good morning. I want to give you... I want to give you a couple of uh, things this morning. The first will be... uh, Pretend it's Christy's lips. Okay. (laughs) My voice is a little raspy anyway. I had a little cold. But first I want to give you what was different when I first started coming here. As uh, Rocky says, what was unique. And then I want to give you what's kept us here for 35 years, Christy and I. So, give you a little background first. Grew up in church, uh, went every Sunday, every Wednesday. Uh, when I got to my late teenage years, I dropped out of church. It's on my own, so I didn't go. Youth don't do that. I regret that mistake uh, terribly. And so, fast forward a little bit, got married, was living in a subdivision in West Knoxville. I didn't like living in subdivision. Christy had grew up with horses. So we started looking for some acreage, and we wanted to be in Carnes, Powell, Hardin Valley. Of course, couldn't afford any good land out there, so we kept moving north and east. I really feel like God had moved me where I needed to be. And so uh, we bought some acreage in what's now Plainview, uh, was preparing to build, and so uh, Christy mentioned, we need to find us a church when we uh, move. And so uh, I was agreeable to that. I didn't think church had anything to offer me. I didn't hurt it all. Uh, but I was wanting our, our children to be exposed to the Bible, exposed to Christianity, exposed to the church. And so uh, in 1988, we built that house. Uh, the lady that did our construction loan was Pat Crumley, a member of this church. She invited us to come. So I think that's another way God was working. And so uh, we moved in in October 1988. We had uh, our first child by then. About exactly a year later, we started coming here. Uh, We had a two-year-old at that time. Christy was pregnant with her daughter to be born in January. And so uh, I had a lot of guilt coming to church. I, I knew I hadn't lived properly, hadn't lived a Christian life. So the first Sunday, I thought, eh, it was okay. It wasn't all that great. I think Satan didn't want to let go of me. But the second service, the very next Sunday, I don't know what Rocky was preaching on, but I thought, I can apply this to my life. I can take this home today and use it. I can take it to work on Monday and use it. So that was the first thing that was different, unique about Corrington. Uh, I'd never had any application of the Bible to your everyday life. So what's kept us here for 35 years? Uh, What has kept me here, me and Christy here for 35 years is accurate teaching of the Bible. 
Uh, Rocky puts it out plain and simple. Rocky teaches salvation is through repentance, obedience, and following Jesus. These uh, messages he's done this year on what it means to be a Christian. It's not just walking an aisle or saying a prayer. And the, the best thing I liked what he said is, pastors don't tell people what it'll cost them. And he said, what's it, co- what's it cost a Christian? It costs you everything. And so I don't believe we're just trying to play church here. I don't think we're uh, just going through the motions, but I think we're trying to make disciples. And one thing about being a deacon over the years is behind the scenes or behind the curtain, I get to see our staff and our ministry leaders' hearts. And all our staff and ministry leaders strive for excellence because they genuinely care about the people they lead and their spiritual growth. They're not just playing church. They, they are sincerely concerned about uh, our eternity. And Rocky suggested that we say, well, where are we at now? And I have a belief that all Christians have a next step to taking their walk following Jesus. And I would tell people, to the person that just got saved, or I always use Billy Graham as an example, that we all have that next step to take. Billy Graham had the next step to take when he was alive in following Jesus, even though we put him up on a pinnacle. So where am I at now? I'm a sinner needing to take my next step in following Jesus, and I think I'm in the perfect place to do it. Thank you. All right, next, next up is Mark Morris. I baptized Mark and Tara in 2006. Mark also leads a community group and serves with Tara on our Wednesday night cooking team. Mark is retired from the Knoxville Fire Department where he was the Deputy Chief of Administration. Paired, and um, I'm going to read it as well, but one of the things Mike mentioned about church, I just wanted to share a little of my background. I was fortunate, I grew up in church. Uh, I grew up in a Methodist church, and if many of you maybe have come from a Methodist church as well, and uh, you're heartbroken, is the way I feel, about where uh, the Methodist church that John Wesley founded has gone. Anyway, um, as Rocky said, I was a firefighter, so I worked shifts, and a lot of times I would have to work on Sundays. And we were going to Washington Pike United Methodist Church, the church where Tara and I were married. Anyway, uh, we lived in Gibbs, though, in Huntington Place, right off Emory Road. And um, she started, she grew up in a Baptist church. And so she started going to church, a couple different places, trying them out. Anyway, she came here. And uh, so we started discussing, and she said, I really think you would like it. And I didn't realize that, that, um, I didn't realize how much more there could be uh, from church. Again, I was fortunate enough to grow up in church, um, felt very blessed to do that. And, um, but I, like I said, I had no idea that there was so much more. Um, Methodist church pretty much is kind of scripted. You get a couple of verses, uh, you do the Apostles' Creed, you read, uh, um, you know, the, the prayer and, and it just, it's very, very regimented. And, uh, but biblically, really, we would get two couple of verses and then that was it. And, and Rocky just buries us <laughs> in verses. And it's, it's, sometimes it's overwhelming and hard to keep up with. And um, anyway, but I just really appreciate that. And I, again, I, I had no idea what I was missing uh, until I came here. Anyway, we started alternating, and then ultimately we started coming here full time. Um, my father and stepmother, who my stepmother was a Methodist minister and retired and worked at the church where I attended and then retired there. And um, it was it was a little heartbreaking to them that that I had changed churches, but they understood, and my dad and I had good talks about it. So that was. That was it. So that's a little bit of my background of how I get here. And one of the things that, the reason that I came to Corrington, but the other thing that I wanted, and I didn't want to miss this, and I just want to read this. And again, Rocky didn't really want us to read, but I didn't want to forget any of this. So I wrote it down and forgive me for reading now. Um, but 
what I believe is that there are a ton of reasons that make Coryton Church special. And this is a special, special place. Um, but I tried to narrow it down. And one thing that I wanted to focus on is the faithfulness of the people that walk in these halls all the time. Not just the staff, but the people, you, all of you. You show it all the time. Um, many people believe that faith is simply believing in something. That's it, just believing in something. But it is part of it. But faith is an action word. It, it, you know, in James, it mentions that uh, show me your faith without works and I'll show you my faith with works. And then he goes on to say, faith without works is dead. And I think that's very important. Um, we're blessed to see faith in action around our church on a regular basis. Uh, in our case, faith in action is participating in the multitude of ministries, Mike mentioned several of them, um, that are available. And a lot of times we take it for granted, but you know, from the minute you walk in the door, there are greeters. And if you turn to the left, there's a coffee service. And if you look over where Grant is and you don't realize it, but we have a safety team. And then if you go down this hallway, you've got the children's ministry. And they're just, there's everywhere you turn, there's a ministry opportunity. And the people that serve in these are faithful and they show their faith every day. And they realize even though they don't, they can't touch and they can't see the physical God, they show that they truly believe that he is real. And like Rocky likes to say, as real as the chair you're sitting in is the way that they show their faith. Um, this is really when you show your faith, when you live it out and you show that you're faithful, that's really where the rubber meets the road. When the action and the belief come together, this happens every day at Coryton. The attendance in my community group can vary anywhere from as little as like four or five people, which sometimes I go in there and I think I'm gonna be talking to myself or sitting there by myself and then people will come in and people come in late and they leave early and then sometimes I'll have five people and sometimes I might have 17 or 18. Um, and if you're not in a community group, just on a sidebar, I encourage you to get in a community group. Mike mentioned it. Um, most of the deacons are members or, or lead a community group and there are other community groups too, but it's really where you get the connection and the relationship that you need. And it, it takes just being in this large room to another level. And I would encourage you to do that. Anyway, but the, the folks in my class, they show their faith every day. You're doing a great job. You don't even need that. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep going. <laughs> they, so like I said, I could have as little as five or I could have as many as 17. And the reason is, is because the majority of my class serve in at least one, if not multiple ministries. Um, one thing I would mention, including my wife, uh, Rocky mentioned that she and I serve on the Wednesday night cook team. Um, and I'll put in a little plug for that. If you uh, like to hang out with people and you don't have to be a great cook and you wanna be on the cook team, come on Wednesday. We start about two or three o'clock in the afternoon. We have supper ready at six. The service starts at 6.50. Uh, it's, we have a lot of fun. Uh, but just again, involve yourself be faithful through the ministry opportunities that are here. Uh, one of them, you can't see her, you can see her picture here, but if you go straight through this wall and upstairs, hey honey, she's up in the tech room. And so there's tech teams that Blake leads and some of them are out here at the front with a sound team, but there, there are opportunities everywhere. And all these folks, they're living their faith out loud. And that's just what I would encourage you to do. Um, we see it every day, I love to see it. And that's what I think makes Coryton special and why I think people ought to come here because again, of the scriptural um, overload that you get. And I mean that in the best sense, it's overload sometimes, but it's so much more than from where I came from. And again, I, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking the Methodist church, but it is very disappointing and, and heartbreaking for me from what I knew it as growing up. And um, anyway, this is a great place and uh, I'm glad everyone is here and I hope you would encourage family and friends to come. And, and again, if you're not involved in a ministry, do that and your faith and your faithfulness will grow exponentially. Thank you. Great job, Mark. I baptized Jimmy Royal and his wife Becky in 2006. They've been heavily involved in the lives of our young people. 
They own logistics technology and IT company and they handle all of our IT and phone system needs. Jimmy's not here today. I think he heard, they're out of town. I think he heard we were doing it today, so he planned a quick trip. But we do have him on video. Simply put, Coryton is home. We started coming to Coryton in 2005 for our kids, like many young couples do. God changed our hearts and lives through uh, Rocky's preaching um, and people at the church. We first started attending Mike Scott's community group and met folks in that class that we have done life with over the last 19 years. Our kids have grown up together. Um, we've served in the same ministries, been there for each other in good times and bad. Many of you are like family. I can't imagine where my family would be or the kind of lives we would be living without this church and what God has done through this church and through Rocky. I can't speak highly enough about Rocky and the impact he's had on my life. I'm forever grateful for Rocky and his obedience and faithfulness to God's call. For the first few years, it seemed like he was spying on us, always preaching right at us, but it was God using him and his gift of clarity for teaching God's word to change us and grow us in the Lord. Several years ago, I felt led to go to Ohio and spend the day with my uncle that was sick and was expected to pass away soon. I was equipped to patiently share the gospel with him throughout the day. And one of the things that he said is that is so simple, I've never heard it put that way. I felt like all I did was regurgitate Rockyisms to him. I didn't feel like I was stumbling over my words, and if you know me, that is common, or trying to remember lofty church talk. And all I was doing was having a conversation with my uncle. It was awesome. It was a for such a time as this moment for me. I've had family visit and hear Rocky preach and say, wow, that was awesome. Is it like that all the time? Yeah. And we sometimes take it for granted. Coryton is more than one man, but I believe our church is blessed because of Rocky and his faithfulness, character, integrity, leadership, and preaching. You'll hear the whole of God's word here. You'll understand what you hear. You may not like it, but you'll be equipped to apply it to your life. Live it out in front of those around you and share it when the Lord prompts you. Uh, next up is Danny Allen. Danny, if you'd head this way. Uh, Jimmy might be shooting a Mr. Clean commercial somewhere. We're not sure. <laughs> those of you who remember Mr. Clean. Danny Allen joined Corton in 1993. He leads a community group, leads our summer mission trips out west, has been involved in nearly all the construction that we have self-performed here at the church. Danny was diagnosed with cancer back in 2012, scores of trips back and forth to Vanderbilt Hospital. The cancer's in remission, but he now lives with an organ rejection disease called GVHD. Danny and Cindy own and operate Meadow, Meadow, Went, Meadow <laughs> Mint Farms, a wedding and meeting venue in the Carter community. He's retired from serving as an account coordinator with the C.H. Robinson Company. I don't know about all of that. <laughs> I think it's Blake. Blake, I don't know if you can hear me. I think you're the one that said it might be okay to get a little undone. And it's probably going to get tougher before, it gets, before I get done here. I can't stand when somebody gets up and starts to speak and starts making excuses. But I'm going to be that guy. <laughs> I walked out this morning and left my eye drops. And I got a left eye that's pretty angry. So if you see goofed up, it's part of the graft host disease. It's part of it. It's the momentary light afflictions, right? So nothing wrong, it's just a little angry. Probably not gonna say anything that's not already been said. We've had some wonderful testimonies, some wonderful accounts of some really incredible, godly people. I've enjoyed it. When I ask this question, why Coryton? I'll go back 30 plus years to Cindy and I were at our home church in, the, in our Carter, I live across the river uh, in the Carter Sunnyview View community. Our little home church, been there for all my life. We started thinking it's time to look for something different. Church was dying. Luckily, it thrills my heart to know that they're doing well right now. But Cindy and I said, you know, what do we, what do we want? And we wanted something for our, our, we had one child, little. He's big now. We want something for our child that will keep them interested, keep them wanting to come back. 
we, we want to see what the music is like. We've kind of always done music and kind of enjoy that and see what they got to say, sing. And then I, I've heard about this guy named Rocky. I said, I want to go check this dude out and see what he's got to say. And we did. We showed up over here in this building. This was just a big green grassy field. Showed up, went to church, kind of slipped in the back, checked it out, come out. There's two peppermints on our windshield of our car. <laughs> now, I wanted to get some peppermints last night to have a show and tell right here. And honey, my wife will attest, we don't have peppermint and I didn't take time to go get them. I come downstairs this morning and guess what was open on the countertop? Honey, I didn't tell you this, but a bag of peppermints just like we got on my windshield. Two of them, here you go. Here you go. Two peppermints. Next Sunday, we come back. Guess what? On my, min on my windshield. Two peppermints. This is fun. <laughs> we come back the third Sunday. Now you're looking for the peppermints, aren't you? Sure enough, two peppermints. This time, we thought, let's fill out one of those visitor's cards. And I'm, I'm thinking, who reads those anyway? Do they really read them, and when do they read them? Fill it out. Monday morning, about 7.15, I'm getting ready to go to work. White truck, big old white plumber's truck pulls down my driveway. I thought, who's this? Such and such well service. I thought, well, Dad's called somebody to fix a well. We have a well, still do. Said he's called somebody to fix a well. The guy pulls in my driveway. The guy gets out and says, hi, my name is Bill, and I appreciate you coming to court in yesterday, and here's my phone number if you have any questions. And here is a fresh loaf of bread that my wife cooked for you. Have a good day, sir. Who in the world does that? Well, I can tell you she's sitting right back there. You never know when you come in here and you find a friend, and that be friend becomes a good friend, and that becomes a dear friend that walks life with you. You never know. Through the ups and the downs and the challenges that we handle in this life, you never know when somebody might be sitting right here that's going to walk those paths with you. Sometimes a train runs off the track. And you can't walk. Sometimes all you can do is just stand and hang on. And there might be somebody that's standing there beside you. There was for me in this church. Why come to Corton? Many different answers to that question. And I guess I get frustrated when I see people doing church at a distance. I'm going to slip in and do my deal, go on a trip, throw a buck in the plate, and I'm good. There may come a time when you need more than just church at a distance. There's a song. I wasn't going to say this, but I'm going to do this. There's a song. Some of you all have a clue who a guy named Jelly Roll is, but some of you do. Okay? He sings a song that says, I can only talk to God when I need a favor. I only talk to God when I need a favor, and I only pray when I ain't got a prayer. Who am I to expect a savior if I only talk to God when I need a favor? God, I need a favor now. I get people that wanna do church from a distance, there's gonna come a time when you're gonna need something more. And it's right here. Among a body of believers, Fast forward the clock, 
a few years from the peppermints, standing right over there, one Wednesday night after church, getting ready to go to choir practice. Remember those days? Rich, they were fun. They were fun. Standing right there, getting ready to go to choir practice. A guy walks up. It's the same guy driving that white truck. He said, I heard you do a little bit of building. I said, yeah, a little bit. He said, you want to go to South Dakota? I said, South Dakota? I didn't even know where it was. I had to go home look on the map to see where South Dakota was. I said, maybe. What are you doing? We're building a church. I said, I like the sound of that. Might do it. When are you leaving? He said, Saturday morning at 5.30. <laughs> I said, this Saturday? He said, yeah, two days. I said, I probably can't get off from work, but if I can, I'd like to go. He said, let me know. I went in Thursday morning. I thought, there's not a chance I'm going to get off. I lucked out. No, wait a minute. I don't do luck. There was an appointed time for me to on that week calendar to be empty for me to go to South Dakota. You want to get to know somebody? You get in a truck and ride 1,600 miles with them. <laughs> Love that guy. Love that guy. Who's courting? We're a church that believes in missions. And that rings my bell big time. We have a pastor that gives, and not only do we give, we do. Locally, throughout the Southeast, East Tennessee, Appalachia, Kentucky, out West, and across the world, we're doing missions. You see, when you do a mission, it's not about me or it's not about you, it's about them. I love missions. And I love this church for the fact that we're big involved in missions. Many churches are. Okay, I get it. And I'm thankful for that. But we are, and it's a big deal for me. I hope you're here. I hope when you come here, one of the reasons that you're here, atop of your list, is to hear the word preached. We've all said this. But to hear grace and truth rightly divided, it's not an everyday thing. We have a pastor that can preach relevant message, messages, have uncompromised truth. A pastor who has the guts to say what a lot of people won't. I'm about done. Been in church all my life, kind of like Mark. Um, let me say this. It doesn't make me any better than anybody else. I'm no more holy, no more spiritual than a guy that's just walking in here for the first time. Little fun fact. My mom and dad took me and my sister to church all my life. In the late 50s, before I was born, my mama was the organist at Fifth Avenue Baptist Church. At that time, one of the prominent churches in Knoxville. She married my dad, and they moved out to the Sunny View Carter community, and we joined our little community church. So I've been in church all my life, and I'll go up any, even further. I spent nine months at the organ bench before I was ever born. Again, doesn't make me any better than anybody else. That's just my journey. Well, there's an insurance commercial, that guy Farmers, he said, I've not seen it all, but I've seen a thing or two. You know that guy I'm talking about? I've not seen it all, but I've seen a thing or two. What I've learned is real is rare in the church world and among pastors. Around here, I would like to say that real is frequent and real is normal. But understand, we're just a bunch of imperfect, broken people trying to walk this path. That's all we are. It's okay to hurt. It's okay to walk in here and not have it all together. Because if you do, come and see me. I need your help.
I hope one of the reasons that you're here is to get involved in the fellowship of this family of believers. Because there may come a day when the train runs off the track and you may need some help. You may need real Christian friends to walk beside you, to encourage you when life is tough, to listen without judging, to hold you accountable when you start to stumble, to, be, to speak truth and to be real where an easy path might be to fake it. As a body of believers, I believe it brings honor and glory to Jesus Christ. And I want to be a part of a church like that that does that. To be a part of a church that's building the kingdom that's reaching the lost. I consider it a privilege that God led me here 30 something years ago and hasn't told me to go anywhere else yet. I've got friends that's been here, that's left. I see them on occasion. I try to ask them, where are you going to church now? Such and such. That's, where are you going, Coryton? Oh, I can't tell you how many times I've heard this. Oh, you still go to Coryton? God hadn't told me to go anywhere else yet. I consider it a privilege to be a part of this fellowship, to do life with dear friends and have a pastor that I respect, that I believe in. Many of you have went through tough spots. I don't put myself on any pedestal. Some of you have been through some tough spots, tougher than I'll ever know. You've lost kids. You've watched people that you love suffer with disease, with tragedy. God help you. But 2 Corinthians 4 says this, that what we go through is just momentary light afflictions. Oh, they're tough. Yeah. They hurt. Yeah. They cost you. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 says we walk through these light afflictions but look at the rest of it. Preparing us for an eternal weight of glory that is beyond all comprehension. Can you get your head around that right there? We're gonna go through stuff as a church. Betsy talked about it. It's a family. My family goes through things. This family goes through things. We're gonna go through things. But it's nothing compared to the eternal weight of glory. Lastly, this church has been a church that has been good to me. I could go on and on and on. Been good to me. Supported me. Walked with me. With me and my family, Cindy and I. And I'm forever grateful. And I think it's only fitting that I close by saying, thank you, Corton Church, for what you guys have done to me, for me. If you know me, you know I'm pretty conservative financially. Maybe tight would might be a better word, I don't know. And uh, when we got the idea of building the building, it was going to be less than it is. And it was the deacons who increased the size of it. Usually the deacons are trying to hold the pastor back. In our case, they were pushing us forward. That's a very big difference. In a lot of churches, the pastors and staff are in competition with the deacons. Power struggles and all that kind of stuff going on. In our deacons meetings, we pray, we've cried, we laugh every time we get together. They're not draining emotionally, they're life-giving. It's just so different from what most people experience uh, in that situation. Somebody visited here years ago and they'd been on staff at the church and uh, they'd been around for several months and I said, well, well, what do you think about church? He said, well, what I like the most about it is I can't figure out who's in charge 
and nobody cares. I thought, that is a great description. I like that. I like that. Tim Whittemore joined our church in 2009. Tim operates the Chick-fil-A store on Chapman Highway. His wife, Sherry, sings on our praise team, sang here for us this morning. Son Ben's about to go back to college. He's been playing guitar for us this summer. Tim, come on up. Good morning, everybody. Uh, real quick, just a funny story about Danny. Um, my wife and I started visiting uh, in 2009, and uh, one of our sons was sick uh, during a Christmas time, so I came by myself, and um, Danny was singing Old Holy Night. And when I got home, my wife asked me, you know, how the, the service was. And I said, oh, they brought in a professional to sing Oh Holy Night. It's unbelievable. Uh, so for you guys that have been here long enough, uh, that is a pure treat to hear him sing Oh Holy Night. Uh, like I said, um, I've been here uh, since 2010. A um, couple things that I like about the church. One, I like how our pastor um, teaches us instead of preaching to us. Uh, we have an outline. He goes through the outline. He gives us scripture. And then also he says, if you don't believe me, go read it for yourself. And so it gives us an opportunity to learn the Bible, but also he gets to teach us instead of talking to us all the time. So I really appreciate that, Rocky. Uh, the second thing that I like um, is that he's relatable. So um, I don't know many pastors over the time that will tell us about his abusive um, mom's boyfriend, Clyde, right? Um, he's also talked to us about having to give plasma because he hasn't had enough money back when uh, he and Betsy first started out. There's not a lot of pastors that will do that. And uh, Rocky will. And um, for some of us who have been in the room, maybe you guys have had those trials. So Rocky is able to relate to, to you guys, to us, uh, in a more of a relatable way. Um, you will see him in the, uh, before the service talking to the, in, out in the crowd. You will see him after the service uh, in the back if you need to talk to him. Um, we know of a pastor that has a security detail and you don't get to approach this pastor unless you go through the security detail. And Rocky's not like that. So he's relatable. Uh, the third thing I like about this church, I love about this church, is family. So uh, this is my family. So Ben's on the left. He's a sophomore at Belmont. Um, and then my wife, Sherry. Uh, we've been married 26 years. And then Brody is a sophomore at Grace Christian Academy. Um, our family has had a lot, a lot of good. We've had some bad. And we've also had some ugly. And the one thing that we have done as a family is we have loved each other, we have supported each other, and we've also fought for each other. Over the 14 years that I've been at this church, we've had a lot of good, we've had a lot of bad, and we've quite frankly had some really ugly moments. And during that time, this church family has loved each other, has, has supported each other, and has fought for each other. And a lot of churches, um, when going through trials, they turn on each other. They'll have uh, different factions within the church that will uh, decide they like this idea versus another idea. Um, this church hasn't done that. We've uh, supported each other during those trials and um, it was a wonderful thing to see. Last but not least, uh, one thing, I, don't, I, I promise I'm gonna land this rocky, I don't know how to explain it but I call it the bud excuse, and I promise I can land this. Um, for those of you guys that have ever gone looking for a home, um, you may be going through a home with a realtor or whatever, and you find certain things about the house that you like, but there's things about the house you don't. So for example, I love the kitchen, but I don't like the master bedroom. I like the uh, dining room, but the closets are too small. This church has done a phenomenal job of taking away that but excuse. It doesn't matter if you start at the children's area with Amanda, 
uh, with Megan, uh, and then go on up t- um, to you know Brendan Spencer. You you look at our music. Our our music's top notch. Our media is top notch, and we have just phenomenal leaders. And so when people come to visit our church, it's very hard for them to be able to say, "I like the sir, the pastor, but the music's not good." We just have phenomenal leaders within this, um, within this church. But the leadership can only take this church so far. So just really quick, um, I know we have people volunteering over in church, but if you volunteer in any capacity with our church, just raise your hand real quick. So all these people that volunteer, that's what makes up Coryton Church. We are a family that we love each other, we support each other, and we fight for each other. So thank you. Tim, I was relieved to know that you were talking about that, but <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Next we have uh, Dustin Latham. I baptized Dustin and his wife Alice in 2005. He serves as our administrative te- on our administrative team, which works with me on budget and personnel matters. In addition, he's been involved in our children's missions programs. He's the owner of Integration Technology, a general contracting company that specializes in telecommunication. And a number of the people in our church work for him. Where's Dustin? Are okay. you? Okay, hold the mic close to your lips. Pretend it's Jimmy Royal's lips. <laughs> I'm usually the one with the jokes. But I'll take it today. Um, I hope everyone's enjoyed this as much as I have. It's been a real treat. Um, the greeters coffee stand workers, the folks that hand out our bulletins, the tech team, the musicians, the singers, adult small group leaders, youth small group leaders, children's department teachers, the preschool workers, our securities team, our upward commissioner, upward coaches and concession stand workers, all of the men and women who help build and maintain things around here our Bible school workers, preschool director, our children's director, media director, our college director, our student worship director, our youth pastor, our educational pastor, our worship pastor, our pastor of et cetera, our senior pastor, our secretaries, our bookkeepers, our deacons, our Wednesday night cooks, our missionaries, And it's not just these, it's every one of you. If anyone ever asks me about why Coryton, um, my answer is always, well, I just, I brag about how awesome the people are at our church, how loving, generous, and hardworking all of you are. So why Coryton Church? The people, that's all I got. Dustin's the one that usually starts the uh, fun and the jabbing in the deacons' meetings. He, he's convinced that sarcasm is a spiritual gift. Uh, anyway, that's another story for another time. Last but not least, we have Mark Field. I baptized Mark Field and his wife, Vicki, whose birthday is today, back in 1987. Many of you have had your lives changed because Vicki invited you to Coryton. I'm going to guess she's invited more people to this church than any other 10 people here, including staff. Mark has led uh, co-ed community groups over the year. He's now leading a new men's group. He serves on our Way Floyd team. He's the head of our administrative team. And he does a great Kaz Walker impersonation. You might get from him later. Mark's the Senior Vice President for Development at the Knoxville Chamber. Right. 
Well, some, as Rocky said, some 37, 38 years ago, I fell in love with a beautiful lady named Vicki, and he already stole my thunder. Happy birthday, sweetheart. She sits right back there. <clears throat> so, been at Corrington now uh, almost 38 years. Uh, when I fell in love with Vicki, it meant that I would fall in love with her kids and our seven grandkids and our two great-grandchildren at this point. Uh, but one of the caveats for me being able to date and marry Vicki in her kids' eyes were that I needed to come to church with them. And at that time, uh, not that Vicky was not a good churchgoer, but her kids were very involved in this youth department. So uh, a lot of you have come on the arms of your children. What a wonderful thing that your kids have led you to the Lord. And so that's what happened with Vicky's kids with me. Uh, Mark was 16 at the time, Amy was 15. And so I came from a no church background. I've jokingly said I wasn't unchurched, I was de-churched. I had only been in church about six times in my whole life, uh, once for vacation Bible school, a couple of times at Christmas, and a couple of times at Easter with my grandparents. Uh, I was the child of a very dysfunctional, addicted family. Both my mom and dad were addicted, my dad to alcohol, my mother to alcohol and prescription drugs. Um, unfortunately, because of that background, I repeated that pattern. So as I grew into my young adult age, um, I started drinking and doing drugs and, and partying and, and became a very dysfunctional adult as well because of uh, the lack of parenting and the lack of, of uh, uh, commitment uh, to, to being mature that I had. So came to Coryton with Vicki and her kids and really, you know, some of you have come with church backgrounds, but coming into a church like this where the word is preached and where people are trying to live out their Christian values and their Christian lives was very intimidating, but I just came as I was. I didn't know how else to, to come. Um, and I got to tell you, I was met with, by real people who cared about me just where I was. Uh, so I remember coming into church one Sunday after having been out all night drinking. I'm sure I smelled like alcohol. Uh, I'm sure it was evident from the look on my face and the bloodshot eyes uh, that I was hung over. And uh, Danny mentioned Bill Anderson. Bill Anderson walked up to me. I didn't know him from Adam. He put his arm around me and he said, you've had a tough night, haven't you, son? And I said, yes, sir, I have. And he said, well, we're glad you're here. That's loving people right where they are. Uh, I also had the experience of losing my father while I was still going to church here before Vicki and I got married. Uh, I was at my house prior to the receiving of friends and Jess Warren showed up with a Pyrex dish with corn that Betty had prepared for me and my family and I had barely been going to church here for just a short amount of time and he said, we love you and the church loves you and we're so sorry you're going through this terrible loss right now. I got to tell you, I didn't get the experience with the bread with Bill, but I got the experience with Jess and the corn, and it was unbelievable. What an impact that made on me as someone who didn't know what that kind of love, unconditional love, love that didn't have to be there was about. And so that was the kind of experience that I started to have here. So... Knowing who I was, my life prior to coming to Coryton is best described in Galatians 5, 19 through 21. It says, the acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. That was me. And I started hearing that message very clearly and realizing that I needed a savior. I needed to change my life. It was never more evident to me than one Thursday and Friday night that I had been on a drunken binge um, for two nights and uh, found myself in a hotel in West Knoxville. I called my wife. She didn't know where I was. Uh, she said, where are you? I didn't want to tell her. I finally broke down and told her that I had been uh, uh, on an alcohol and drug-induced binge for a couple of days, and she called Rocky. 
I would not recommend uh, if you're going to church here now that you call your pastor after a drunken binge. Well, I say I wouldn't recommend that. I actually would because he showed up at the hotel and I got in the back of a van with another uh, person that goes to this church and Rocky sat in the back seat with me all the way home and explained to me how much God loved me, how much he loved me, how much our church loved me and how I didn't have to live like that anymore again, met me right where I was. He also counseled me to get help, but he also counseled me that the problem that I had was really more about coping than it was about addiction. And he prayed for me and helped me walk through that uh, difficult time. Um, I learned then that, and Rocky has said this, but I want you to get this. You don't just need Jesus or salvation in case you die. You really need Jesus and salvation because you just might live. And that was my case. I needed Jesus and salvation because I needed to live. And so in Matthew 18, 12 through 14, it says, so Jesus told them a story as he did many times in order to explain spiritual truths. What do you think, he said, if a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the 99 on the hills and go look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the 99 that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. Perish. I was the, the one. It would have been easy for our pastor to say, well, that's really horrible. He shouldn't do that. I hope he gets in church. But he came and got me and sat beside me and was real and was loving where I was. So to close, I just want to say that the reason that I think Corrington's unique is it's real. It's a real church with a real pastor, with real people who will love you when you do well and also when you fall. Luke 19, 10 says, the father sent Jesus on a rescue mission to seek and save the lost. People who are lost don't know the real value of a church family that can teach them how to live. I'm sure glad I found that family here at Coryton.